In this video we will show how to combine data from UAV imagery along with terrestrial point cloud data that we're going to use for control on our U, uh, UAV data. At first let me take you through some of the import options within Infinity. So Infinity can clearly import data from UAVs in terms of images. We can also import point cloud data in any number of formats. So if your scanner or if your little station is able to output any of these formats, then they can be used uh, as control for the UAB, for UAB. Um, and clearly can import data from our uh, multi-station MS60 as well directly into Infinity as well. The other thing that we need to combine data from point clouds, uh, from terrestrial laser scanners and UAV, we need a coordinate system. So one of the things that differentiates Infinity's, Infinity from a photogrammetric uh, software package is that Infinity is very much focused on traditional survey workflows. And we respect that, that fact by essentially needing the coordinate system be the, to be defined. And good news is within the coordinate system manager in Infinity, we can essentially access any available coordinate system uh, on the planet. For the UK, we have available the 15 and 2002 realizations of OSGB 36, as well as the current survey grid for HS2. So all of those can be applied directly to the UAB uh, derived dense point cloud model, as well as the RSO image export. On top of being able to do that, to, to use the point cloud data. Clearly, you can also use Traverse and use those as control. Uh, here I'm displaying on screen just the image, what we call the image frustrums for UAV data. This is actually UAV data from a third party drone, um, a DJI drone, which you used, but also unique to Infinity. This data, if it's imported and if it has the relevant standard deviation um, values applied to it, even, even, even from RTK positions or post-process tracks, or even after readjust, readjusting this, their positions after applying the bundle adjustment in the UAV photogrammetric uh, process, you can actually access all of the information through, infin through Infinity. So we start all of the information in terms of the CQ values in all three, um, all three variants, so 1D, 2D and 3D. Uh, and clearly along with the WGS-84 light long ellipsoidal height, but because we are using a coordinate system that has a geoid model attached to it, we also include uh, the, the geoid separation and the um, orthometric height as well, so here. So if I want to filter my data to, to, to understand how good or how bad was my acquisition on site, I can clearly do that both using our own AX20 drone, but also any other third-party drone that supports uh, storing this information on board their images. So allow me to disable the images for now, because we don't need to see them. Okay. So on to so doing some work. So here on the facade, this is actually terrestrial laser scanner data. So and just uh, as an example here, this roof four point was a data was a point that was converted from the point cloud into a, into a control point. How to do it? Quite simply, I'll do an example here. So I'll just select this point over there, and then as I select it uh, on the property grid, uh, Infinity will then offer me the option to create a new point. So I'm going to call it, let's say, wall, and. I can see that it's currently it's a cloud point, but if I hit that button, I can then change it to a control point type, like so, and I'll give it this name, and I can see also its local position, uh, because this state is already your efforts, but once I create it, a new point is created, and the symbol actually matches um, the hierarchy of symbols in infinity to be used as control points then further along the, the workflow. So even if you pick a few of these points along the, the point clouds that you want to use for control, you can then proceed to show you the settings to, to derive a point cloud from, from your, the UAV imagery. So I'm going to go to my settings here. Um, 
the data set I'm showing you, I did, I did it in full resolution. Uh, the camera pose accuracy, this we actually don't need to use it if the accuracy of the camera has been embedded into the into the images. If it hasn't, we will we'll estimate those values here. How accurately I can mark my control points. And here, which is something very dear to our hearts, we can actually control how the um, the focal point and the principal point gets computed if it's a third party drone for which the camera has not been previously calibrated from the factory. We have full control on how this, this calibration can be optimized within uh, within infinity the way we check for tolerances or for the accuracy of our point cloud red model is by using uh, checkpoints and i'll show you a report on this uh, later on uh, and also quite unique to, to infinity after a point cloud has been generated we can filter it by a certain a filtering threshold and the minimum number of matches per point so the, the point cloud that i'm about to show you from the, the this drone i have filtered it to a, a level of accuracy of 20 mil. So think, think of this as what we usually do in our GNSS kit when we say we are not happy to store a point if the accuracy is above a certain threshold and we also want to average that point out by a certain number of measurements. Here we are doing the same in infinity but for every single point that we are creating from, um, from the UAB imagery. And this can be done as many times as you want after the, the initial dense point cloud has been has been generated but what this gives you is a really 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 clean point cloud and really really accurate again infinity is a surveying software package that can do photogrammetry so we very much respect the survey workflows in terms of accuracy and precision so and to add control points essentially we can add any of the control points or any of the points that have been processed and computed within Infinity, whether they are from TPS, GNSS, manually keyed in. Here we have a list of points that were picked from the from the point cloud. This has been done. this has already been processed, but I can show you here. So there's a nice overview here in the bottom right of where the point the control points are, but also where the checkpoints are. Uh, I've selected the, the some selection for. Um, the combination of control points and checkpoints, which will not be part of the model. They're just used for validation. And also quite useful if you're using one of our controllers or if you're taking some images your own, I can use those images to um, give me a preview or where, on where I measure the control points. So for example, if you're using the CS15 controller or the CS20 controller and you're linking an image to a point when you measure it for, for, for control, that image will then be carried through to infinity and it will show here leaving literally no 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 space for questioning where the control point was measured here you just go through the process of marking up the the, the, the points um, you also have a very nice feature where we can just show the images where the points can be reprojected and we also have a way to essentially sort the images by the closest distance to um, the control point that that can be projected in set inside the image which is very nice and makes the whole process be very very smooth so i've done all of this as well let me just show you some of the uh, results in terms of reporting so this was re right click report for orientation report and we would see that on our reports, we report basically on everything that was used to derive the point cloud model from. So from the coordinate system and the little relevant joint model to the sensor that was used, the camera model to the initial focal lens as it as it came from the factory. We optimized this focal lens later, later on in the process. Um, an overview of the results, where you can see that here on the average of the control points, we're down to 20 mil, for example but also on the checkpoints, um, which we're not using the model, the, 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 the estimate of error is also very low. Um, by tweaking those parameters for, for the camera calibration, I can see that from the initial 8.8 .8 millimeters, I came down to 8.7, which for a flight which was about 100 meters high, it does make a huge difference in the vertical um, scale factor uh, of the model. So it's really nice and fine tuned. To match my to match my real life uh, data set, uh, I did something similar with the remaining parameters. 
And here you can see, let me make this a bit bigger. You can see as well that for the control points that I use for this area, what's the difference from the control points that I marked to the actual point cloud that was then generated after after running the bundle, bundle adjustment, which I think is great. And here also on the checkpoints spread across the, the whole the overall model. I think the, the mean result that I have here is one, is one centimeter, which I think is more than acceptable. So this report can be saved as a, as a PDF to be part of your um, Infinity archive. So if I then proceed to show you what the point cloud from the drone, from this drone actually looks like, uh, allow me to disable quickly the, the lines from the traverse, I don't need them. You can see here, let me show you some detail on uh, the road, so you can, so you can analyze really up close and close and personal how clean this point cloud is in the gully the main manhole over there and this is all this is all data which is I'm showing on purpose data that doesn't have a lot of different texture to it so it's typically difficult for a photogrammetry software to generate a point cloud clean on point cloud on uh, areas where there isn't a lot of difference in and terrain or an image contrast, but Infinity actually does a very, very, very good job at doing it. In terms of exports or combined exports, so this point cloud can be exported into a number of formats. Let me show you. Export all. So similar to the, the, to the import formats for point cloud formats, we'll do all the standards, PTS, PTX, PTG 57 LS LAZ, we can export um, the combined point cloud easily like this. We also can get it out as an LGS file to use in our um, in our free viewer or to be consumed with one of our CloudWorks applications. Uh, it's easy to locate where the point clouds are. So this one is the LGS file. As I say, if you have the viewer installed, you can quickly just open it or you can consume it within CloudWorks for, for, for AutoCAD to do further extraction or volume computations or whatever it might be here i think it's pretty easy to see that you have here now a nice complete data set they probably one of the cleanest point clouds you'll ever get from from a drone from a surveying software package for which you are in control of the whole process and the whole, whole workflow even in the water here it's a bit there's a bit of green algae but it was still able to produce a very nice detailed model there hope you like it and we'll speak to you soon